doing YouTube again. Let me get more. You can see the better side. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so passing, the, it's got to pass the flame current. Uh, dirty ground, and typically, if you don't get it out of them two, your path's not good. If your path is good and you got a good ground, typically, if you don't get them two, the board may be bad. I was thinking of a third one, but I don't remember if it, I don't remember actually a third one right now. I don't think I can't think of a third. Oh, I do know too. The rest of the burners are rusty. I've had the end. Leaking shock burners. I've had the end of them be rusty and it won't pass the current. The flame has to be on the burner, and the burner has to be clean. It's the other one. So you got to have clean burners, good ground, clean rod, and <clears throat> good and um, check the current on it. Other than that, so ground burner. Brown, all the all the paths be clean and free of rust. All the grounds attached and free of rust and and build up and clean rod. So bring so a vacuum have, every time. So what did you have on your uh, two things that's wrong with you? What have you got two things that's wrong with? Yeah, the motor and the rod. The motor and the rod. Just work through them. Just work it like it was. You get your motor on it. And I tell people. So what I'm trying to say is, like, do you have to change out any of those pieces, or any of those pieces, pieces, pieces without changing? Which? I'm just saying, like the rod. Well, the rod, I'm hardly ever going to change out. It's got to look pretty bad before I'm going to need to change it. It's got to be eroded from the flame. Okay. If it's eroded from the flame and it's got. You know, it's really pitted and whatever, like it was rusty. Then I'm gonna consider changing it out. Uh, just the main thing I want to know is it's clean. You're hardly ever gonna find a rod that's in bad shape. If the ceramic gets broke on it, I'll change it. Just throw a ceramic. It's got a ceramic insulator around it. If the ceramic gets broke, I'll change the rod out. But then. Yeah, I've had dirty rod and rusty burners and bad ground, I've had them all. I had any combination in a, a time or two, I've had everything be wrong with it. Took me hours. I, I had one. You had a bird. And I had to get the guy to go get his electrician <laughs> to get his electrical system grounded. Drive a ground rod outside. They had changed, and, and this is something I've run across with furnaces. You know, I told you it's gotta have a good earth ground. Back in the day, you got your water line coming in from the street and it was some kind of metal, galvanized, iron, whatever, going through the ground. Well, guess what? They already had ground rod right there. You just tie on to the water plumbing with your ground from your electric, from your breaker panel. And uh, you ground your breaker panel to the water pipe, you got a ground. 25 years later, this iron pipe rusted out going from the street and somebody dug it up and put in plastic. What happened to my earth ground? No got one no more. Mm. Right? Yep. No earth ground. Guess what happened when that happened? They dug up the plastic pipe, no earth ground to the furnace, no flame. I have actually found that to be the case on several times, especially in the metro area. And, uh, but I mean, I've had it happen in Rome. It's happened to me on several occasions during the last 30 years. These furnaces are less than 35 years old typically. When I started in the business in 1982, we were still making ribbon burner furnaces. What's a ribbon burner? 
The, it's the a long one. burner that sticks in the furnace and the flame runs along it like a ribbon, like your gas grill. Mm -hmm. I call that a ribbon burner. Oh, okay. Like a ribbon. That was a impromptu gas furnace heating class. I paid about two and a quarter for them. I caught them on sale and paid about two and a quarter for them. All right, who's going to hook us up? Don't look at him. He's experienced. I want one of you guys to get experience. <laughs> Pull your cap off the low side, uh, off the... Uh, Line sets there and tell me which one you're gonna hook where. Blue's low side. Uh, just, just take the caps on the bottom, the, the little ones. This All one, right. and that one's already off, so. That's your porch, right? That's where you're gonna check your freon pressures at, uh, refrigerant pressures at. Uh, which one is that? This that is one's the got high a red side. dot, which is the high side line. This is the high side, this is the low side. Okay. Put one in your hand at a time and tell me which one is high side and low side. Where are you going to put it? Uh, this is the high side. Which one's high side on your, on your uh, refrigerant lines coming out? You're right. You sure? That ain't a suction line? I mean... Your big line is usually suction or low pressure. Okay, and then the little line's usually your high side. Okay, so the little line will mm -hmm. be the high side. So you want to screw that on the on fast and it'll it'll uh, seal off. Oh, see there, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed it. The other way. Is it? No, not don't Roll spin the that. toward you. I did it. This the you just turn the fitting. You gotta hold oh. the thing still and turn the fitting. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's not. You want Salvador to give it a go? You want to try it again? Here, I tell you what, do the low. It'll do probably do I'll less say, less. You can try it. Keep it on. You, you do the low. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Nah, if you if you get much of that on you, it'll free you. It'll burn them. Up. It's just like screwing your hoses on, except it's got that probe attached. <coughs> Roll it towards you. There you go. Now you got that on. Now mash the button on it till the light turns green. The big orange button on the back of it here. If you get a light, if you get a light on your machine, on your uh, thing, that's just orange button and it should turn you a green light. This is on this side. Yeah, you can spin it around. Yeah, there you go. All right, I ain't gonna light. You want to press the orange button? Yeah, I see like mine right here. See this light? See that orange button? Mm -hmm. Press it button. As long as it's flashing. When you get flashing yeah, the light, flashing. you're good to go. Okay. Where's my freaking test? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you needed that. That's why I said that. Yeah. Feels like somebody's taking your fingers off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it's cold outside and that thing hits you. Oh boy. One reason I like working on gas furnaces instead of heat pumps these days. They got me a little. Are they all like that, or it depends how you hook them up? Or? Yeah, I mean, no, like if you got the loose fitting ones, mm -hmm. when there's liquid in the line, it makes it worse. Start your fit and screw it on there before you this, let it. This way, you're gonna spin that way. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go this. Even with the light on, shit. Yeah, it's okay. The light don't matter. Fighty, fighty. <laughs> Yep, you keep going, keep going. What you want to do is hold. What you want to do is hold that nut back and get it started. You doing it with no gloves? Get you started, get your hand, get your nut started on there. And then when you get there, you just do it quick. When it starts squirting a little bit, just do it quickly. All right. Looks like I'm going to download the app again. I don't know why I don't have the app on this phone. I had it. <laughs> Let's find the... We'll just check it like that in our brains. All right, uh, YouTube's over here. <laughs> All right, what are you going to do with these? Uh, further press today. Let me get up there. I don't know what happened to my Testo probe. It's still in my queue, but it wasn't on the phone. I'll send y'all some money if I ever get famous. Yeah. <laughs> I hold your word to that. <laughs> Now I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to go ahead and plug the disconnect in there, south door. We should be ready to go if it ain't already plugged in, plug it in, it is in. Yeah, Y'all wanna walk right in and turn the plug in the air handler and turn it on for it. Super heat. It's running pretty good to you. Uh, it's based on the temperatures that we got indoors and outdoors. It's a little low. Mm -hmm. Little. It's, it's 118 work. degrees. What's your evaporator temperature? Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. Mm -hmm. Never mind. You got super heat. Some. Mm -hmm. It's cold out here. Yeah. I'm gonna say it looks pretty doggone good myself. It will. <laughs> it's 63 degrees in the house. You're not going to maintain. Uh, you're not going to maintain a 40 degree evaporator when you're trying to get the uh, 43 degree air out of it. Pressure. 
has to be negative pressure. Let's watch what happens when it goes across the coil now. I was up under there with a point two, negative. And then this side right here will be the fan after it goes through the coil. So the coil calls me a, I can get it stay there. Look there, what it went to. Mm -hmm. Point five. Over at point two a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. So if you find a high static on your return, start looking for blocked off returns. Start looking for somebody slid the couch in front of the return and the fabric on the couch has got it stopped up. I'm serious, I've done it. Start looking for a crushed duck under the floor. Collapse flex. Dirty filter. Well, you run across one occasionally that's got two filters in it and somebody didn't know there was one under the floor and they changed the one in the house and didn't change one under the floor. Absolutely, you'll run into that. You'll run into a filter uh, every once in a while and you say, lady, uh, you ought to change this filter every three years at least. Knowing that the last time you were out there was three years ago, she said, well, Keith, you changed it when you were here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> three years ago. Change your filter, you, you, you know, preach to your customer you every time much, you go out there. How much of dirt you can peel off. Yeah. Now, if you got low or almost no static in the return, but the fan's running and you got high static up here and then between the coil and the fan and the air handler, if you go in the fan compartment and you got high static, you go in the return and you got almost no static, what's in between there? Return, fan, what's in between there right here? Coil? The evaporator coil. Yeah. If you got no static in the return and high static on the fan, that means that you dirt, probably got a dirty coil. You can take that static pressure out there and tell tons of things about it. You ain't even opened the panel yet. All you done is poke a hole in the side of the plenum and stuck a probe in it. <laughs> and you found out that you had a crushed duck or you found out you had a dirty coil or now uh, on furnaces the coil is ahead of the fan you got fan and then coil so you may find low or no static on the supply side and high static in the fan side and find out that you've got a dirty coil because this can't push air through the coil they're a little more fun to get in there and clean. You can get in there and clean and get up under the return a lot of times and clean the coil in the air handler. But you've got to get in there and slide the coil out just about to clean it on the gas furnace. And a lot of times that means cutting the lines and take it outside and wash it. What happens if you got to cut the lines? That's half a day job, man. Yeah. you got to cut, you got to pull free on down. You gotta, Store. You gotta uh, cut your copper. You gotta break, braze it back, vacuum it down, release the gas. That's half a day job. You gotta clean the coil like that, and you gotta have the right couplings on the truck or whatever. If you mess up, and ain't got the couplings on the truck. You cut the lines. Now you gotta go uh, uh, United and get some couplings. Mm -hmm. Just bring or if a new you ain't coil got what you see. need, you may want to reschedule it, but I'm a guy that likes to get it done while I'm there, so I try to keep what I need and be able to get the job done while I'm on the job. How much more does it cost you if you have to go to the supply house or come back the next day? A bunch. If you can get it done while you're there and you got time. Now, some people want you to reschedule it. They want you to schedule and do stuff like that. Good. Money. <laughs> money. It was old money, but it's money. That'd be the best when you're on the
Well, I was expecting <laughs> For three days, I've been expecting it. Oh, I had you like Come in, come in, come in already. Money. It's money that's been, it's money that was owed $5,000 back in the summertime, and I'm getting it 100 or two at a time. That ain't fun. Snips over. Let me show you again about the grip on them snips. See that grip on them snips right there? This grip is made for your thumb, and this one is made so you lock them two fingers around it. Mm. You got the one that's got more space, it's made for your fingers. I handle it two or three different ways depending on how I'm cutting. Right and sometimes here. that finger hurts a little more and I just go back mm -hmm. and forth with it. Mm -hmm. What I want to do with them snips is keep them moving like that right there. I want to go... About the same distance as them. where you're at. I'm right not here. taking a long this line, bite. To pilot. That red around here. If I'm trying to take a long bite out of that every time, then I'm gonna be continuously <laughs> wrestling with them snips. Now I've got it at the end of that. Now I gotta get it back in there. If I take a short bite out of it and don't go all the way to the end, so how much faster you can cut that way. So take a short bite, let the snips do the work, turn while your jaw is closing, you wanna turn. If you turn while the jaw is open, you leave a burr on it, so turn while the jaw is closing. Go ahead.